If you're into Planet Aquariums, then this book is a must-have. And I've got the author of this book here with me today, Miss Diana Wallstead. Diana, thank you so much for coming. And I am so happy to be here. Oh my gosh, you're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I really love your book, and I would love it if you could maybe tell, tell us what exactly is the Wallstead Method. It's a low-tech method where you use plants to purify the water mm -hmm. instead of filters. Um, the focus is on plants. It's a low-maintenance procedure, and it incorporates a lot of natural processes. For example, instead of um, having CO2 injection, you would use decomposition to provide CO2 for the plants. Wow. I know that your book goes into a lot of detail as far as all of these things, and there's a lot to it, and I know we're not going to be able to get into every little thing. Mm -hmm. So having you here today to demonstrate how to do your method in one of these bowls is, is going to be really interesting and also very educational for everybody watching. But um, I also, I wanted to ask you, who is Diana Wallstead? I grew up in California. What part? The uh, San Joaquin Valley. It's about 100 miles west of, or east of San Francisco. It's in a the agricultural district where there were a lot of irrigation canals filled with tadpoles, mosquito fish. Oh, wow. And when I grew up, I went crazy collecting these little mosquito fish and tadpoles. And also my mother was into tropical fish, so I had two gallon drums with sword tails and mollies and mosquito fish. And I grew up with them. And my mother always had a, a tank or a pond. And it was a family thing. I love that so much. So your mom was into fish keeping. Very that much so. Such a, that's so awesome because, you know, when you, you as a parent are into fish keeping, you really want to see your kids get into it too, or at least hope, because we didn't really have that happen <laughs> to us, and we wish we did, so your mom must, you know. It looks like so you got into it big time. Well, we did, but not the kids, but okay. your mom must have been so proud when you started keeping fish. It's awesome. Well, I guess so. <laughs> I think she just liked them. Yeah. And I'd help her uh, dig the fish pond, so. Oh, you were a help. Yeah. <laughs> free that, labor. That is so awesome. So, Diana, you have a fourth edition book that just came out. Why don't you tell me, or everybody else, explain, when did you put your first book out? How long ago was that? That was in uh, 1999. Right. That's when I published the first edition. But beforehand, I was writing articles in the magazines, mm -hmm. Tropical Fish Hobbyist and some of the other aquarium magazines. Right. And um, they were very well received. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I was inspired to write the book was is that I did not see anything, any scientific or very little scientific information in the hobby. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was a shame. Yes, definitely. So your book has reached a lot of people, whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. you're, you're very well known, and I've seen several videos, even like on YouTube, where people have done the uh, Wallstead method. I don't know uh, if they're done exactly the way you would do it, so I think it's really nice that you're here to demonstrate how your method is really done, how it's supposed to be done in a bowl. And, you know, if people want to, to know everything about your book, all the details, they can find your book where? At Amazon. Amazon. And basically, the easiest way to do it, since I'm having <laughs> problems listing, is that just to... Um, look under books, Diana Wallstead, Ecology of the Planet Aquarium. Okay. And then look for these 
covers, right? which and, have the same material in. And we're going to put a link in the description below so it's easier for people to click on it and get to yeah. the book. Okay. So, so the first edition is different than the fourth edition. Oh, yeah. And it explains more of, like, what? What is I, the difference? I think they're pretty much the same. It's just that the fourth edition might have some more corrections because over time you make you realize that people are having trouble with potting soil floating or this or that. Right. And um, so by the fourth edition, I knew kind of what the problems were, the driftwood and the right. floating potting soil. So the fourth edition is the one that you've learned things from and you've watched other people learn things from making mistakes and you've made it the best book of all is the fourth edition. The best so far. Yeah. <laughs> so the fourth edition is a must-have. <laughs> okay, you've been doing this for a long time. You've used larger aquariums. You've used bowls. But what is your favorite one to use? In the past, I had the big tanks, 55 gallons with the cichlids and the rainbows and the larger tanks. And that was fun. But um, as time went on, Years went on. I started keeping guppies again. And I love your guppies. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're cute. Yeah. And um, I wanted tanks that I could actually carry if I wanted to change something. Mm -hmm. I wanted something manageable. Right. So it was guppies and small tanks. And then I found that these bowls work really well. I do want to emphasize, though, that um, the bowls that we're setting up, the bowls that we're setting up today, I would use a different procedure for using, a, for doing a larger tank. Yeah. The soil and the, it's just a little bit different because big tanks, they're deeper, mm -hmm. they're going to take bigger plants, and you usually have a filter bringing oxygen throughout the system, whereas the bowl, you don't have the filter, and so you're dependent on the plants to produce oxygen for the little animals inside. Right. So you have to have good plant growth. You're depending on the plants to do the water, the ammonia uptake, oxygen production, CO2 uptake, etc. Mm -hmm. so, so as far as this size bowl, what would you recommend putting in here? Uh, shrimp and small fish. Okay. Uh, some of the, I think, rice fish, but I, I have no experience with the small fish. I've only done it with shrimp. Okay. And the neocardini cardini, shrimp, the red cherry shrimp, mm -hmm. which are the easiest shrimp to work with. I found that, too. Yeah. That's so, a, yeah, that's great. I think that's awesome. I think this is perfect for shrimp. Okay, good. Uh, me, too. <laughs> so do you want to start making them now <laughs> okay are you ready well first of all I have to tell you that we did some uh, I did some prep work well both of us have done some prep work where we soaked the soil right um, overnight and that's to uh, make get some of the air pockets out mm -hmm. and that will make the planting easier for us now um, and you can soak the soil as long as possible but uh, I've done mine overnight did I do it right I think you did it just fine. Are you sure? Is it too much soil? About one inch is what you want. and um, It's just my bowl is bigger than your bowl, so I yeah. thought I'd add a little more. Okay. <laughs> I think it's, it's fine. Uh, okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as far as the soil, there's soil that you can get for potted plants or soil that you can get for gardening. There's different kinds of soil. Without talking about a specific brand, what kind of soil do you like to use? What do you think works best? I think uh, potting soil, any ordinary potting soil that is used to grow house plants mm -hmm. should work just fine. And it has worked just fine for me. Uh, people have to understand that you don't need a sp specific brand. Just get something that will grow houseplants. The manufacturers have figured out 
the fertilizer regime and they've already done the hard work. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for us to worry too much about which brand is this or which. I try to get one that's not fertilized, but if you just get one for house plants, that kind of that potting soil um, is used to grow house plants and they're kind of shade plants, so they don't need a lot of nutrition or fertilizers, so that's why it works pretty well in aquariums. And, I mean, they're plants, too, so it would make sense that mm -hmm. plants, the roots, require the same thing as houseplant roots and plants. Yeah, and the so. nice thing about potting, although you can use garden soil, which is good, um, the potting soil is nice because as it decomp it, it, there's a lot of organic matter, and as it decomposes, it produces carbon dioxide for the plants, and that can really get the plants off to a good start because you're going to get a lot of CO2 from this potting soil. This is exciting. <laughs> I can't wait. And look at how well your bowls are doing. This yeah. obviously works. I it mean, does. It works really well. Um, this bowl, I used two cups of potting soil. And this uh, bowl I did a little differently. I mixed one cup of potting soil with one cup of sand and just used that as my substrate mm -hmm. before planting and covering it with another cup of sand. So basically the formula is for these bowls is two cups of potting soil, or in this case it was one cup of potting soil and one cup of sand, and then covering it with another cup with one cup of sand as you do your planting. Right. Okay, and what's the difference as far as the timing that you did these? One of them was done three, before. Three months ago. This was three. done over three months ago. Wow. Yeah, I did this for the Raleigh Aquarium Club uh, display bowl. And then this one I did about three weeks ago. Wow. And... Uh, it looks so good. Well, thank you. You can definitely tell which one was done longer, you know, uh -huh. three months ago. Yeah. But they're doing so good. Yeah, this one is a little bit different because I put in a sword plant. And this one I just have grass plants and pearl grass. I love that. Yeah, it's pretty, isn't it? And the and shrimps look so happy. The little shrimp and the snails, <laughs> they're so adorable. Yeah, it's great. And this one, you know, I'm going to see if this, um, I really like this red melon sword. It's a dwarf variety. And I'm hoping that it will take, you know, do well in it. So they're li the bowls are a little bit different. Well, thank you for sending the before and after pictures so we can show everybody what it looked like right after you planted yes. them. I think that they'll understand more how this works and how rapidly they grow doing it this way so yeah that's that's awesome. that's, that's key because um, you want the plants to take off right away mm -hmm. and the reason is is that the potting soil is is very organic um, and the bacteria will be causing a lot of um, oxygen consumption CO2, it'll, it's a mess. with the, uh, So you really need to get the plants growing fine mm -hmm. right away. As far as lighting your bowls, how much light do you use? And do you use a specific light, or does it matter? I don't think it matters, as long as they get enough light. What I use for these bowls is a uh, light from Home Depot that was a 19-watt LED. Oh. And um, the, also the bowls were next to a window. Oh, that works. But I found that I was getting a lot of green water algae and um, kind of a constant problem with it. So what I did is I raised the lamp up and then I put the bowls on a siesta schedule where um, the lights went off. I turned the lights off for about four hours. And I also put some curtain material so that the bowls didn't get full sunlight. So I had to adjust it. I saw that there was green water algae. It was a problem. And I, 
I solved it by right. raising the lamps that would decrease the intensity and okay. getting rid of the full sunshine and all that. So sometimes you just got to play yeah. around with it and figure out what works best for your own bowl. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And I've used, I've used clamp lights with CFLs on these bowls in the past. Mm -hmm. And then also desk lights with just any kind of, of light. Right. So you don't have to have some high-tech special light for your bowl. No. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> and I'm sure people appreciate that. <laughs> no, these bowls are the inexpensive way to go. Right. And where did you get the bowl? Where did you find the bowl? Um, I I got them at Walmart. Oh. For ten dollars. Wow, that's. And awesome. you can order them online if the store doesn't have them. They can. They're called um, one gallon fish bowls, and they're made by Anchor Hawking. And oh. I like them because they're very thick glass. And yeah, they really are. Mine feels thinner than. Yours. Yeah, and they. I mean, I've had these are probably fifteen years old, and oh. I've kept them outside under the in the basement and they look great yeah they're <laughs> been mine, mine is a five gallon I oh got really it, i got it at michael's oh that's beautiful oh about three years ago but i like it yeah well okay so with your bowls do you put heaters on them or do you do you use a certain temperature do you think a certain temperature is better for the plants Absolutely. Um, as I said, you want to get the plants growing well, and the temperature should be one that plants like, which is 70 to 82. Okay. Just a general range. And I had a lot of trouble with this in the winter because I started the bowls in the winter. My house is 65 degrees, so I had to use a heater. Okay, so what kind of heater do you use then for your bowls? I found these reptile heating pads at the store they're 7.5 watts and they work just perfectly just insert it like that and I usually use a clothespin or something to attach it to the wall and they keep the temperature at 65 at 75 degrees they bring it up from 65 to 75 okay. and so this works perfectly okay yeah they're real nice well, that's awesome. And but then after your plants start to grow and they're more established, you take it out? Or when, well, now the winter is hopefully over with, and the room temperature is more manageable. So now I don't need the heaters. Oh, okay. That's so, good to know. Yeah. But, the, you know, when I started these bowls in the wintertime, yeah. or this one in the wintertime, I needed to have this heater. Yeah, I... My fish room is heated to 80, so I don't use heaters in my little nano tanks with my plants, and they do just fine. So, yeah, but that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need them, right? Do you use any kind of filtration in these, or do you find that it's not necessary because of the plants? Uh, it's absolutely not necessary, and I would never put a filter in these. Uh, bowls. I'm only asking because somebody might think, you know, you have to put a sponge filter in or something, so I just wanted to no. make sure we touched base on that. No, I think it's an excellent question. Number one, soil contains nitrifying bacteria. Number two, the plants take up ammonia. They produce mm -hmm. the oxygen, so you do not need a, a filter. Okay. I have another question for you. Okay. What about water changes? How do you water change your bowls, or do you water change your bowls and just top off? How do you do that? Um, I do the water changes during the first couple of weeks after setup. Mm -hmm. You'll get a lot of release of nutrients from the soil. A lot of the fertile, a lot of these potting soils are fertilized, and they'll produce ammonia. Mm -hmm. And the plants have not started growing to pick up all of the, the ammonia especially. So you do need to do water changes the first few weeks and monitor the ammonia. That's what I've done. But I found that like this bowl at, the, at 10 days was full, you know it had 0.5 ppm ammonia and um, so I did a, I do 
I did water changes about once a week, 90 percent. Okay. And That's good. now I'm not doing any water changes. <laughs> you just top off? Yeah. And when you do that, do you put any kind of water conditioner in the water that you add? Uh, no. Okay. Because it, it's probably such a small amount. Yeah, if it's a small amount. Now, if I did a big water change, I would need to add a water conditioner. Okay. Because I have excess zinc in my well water, mm -hmm. and it would kill the shrimp if okay. I did a big water change. So... Okay. I, but I usually use aquarium water. I just take it from one of my tanks. Huh? But if, if I had to use tap water, I would use a, I would always use an aquarium water conditioner. Okay, that's good. Good to know. Okay, so as far as the water changing routine goes for these bowls, what would you do as far as a larger aquarium? Would you do it the same way? No, it would be different because... Uh, for a larger aquarium with deep water, you need to have some kind of water movement to make sure that there's enough oxygen in the system. So a big tank is different, and you're also going to have bigger plants. Um, you can use more soil, and a bigger tank is, is just different um, than a bowl because the it's different. And then also I have tanks now that I'm running, they're 10 and 20 gallons that um, I don't have any substrates in. The plants are all in pots. Oh, cute. Yeah. <laughs> or they're on lava rocks, um, the Java, Java fern and bulbitis. Mm -hmm. uh, they're on the rocks, and so I have no substrate. And the reason that I have those tanks is that I can catch the guppies. Oh, it's easier. Yeah. Yeah. So I can, quick. I pull the rocks and the clay right. pots out and catch the guppies. Now, would you filter those because they're larger or no? Uh, no, I don't filter them at all. They don't get any. They're shallow tanks. They're only 12 inches high. Okay. 10 and 20 gallons. Okay. If they were the 55 gallons that are 18 inches high, I would would want to have a filter in there. So the, the bowls are your favorite out of all of them. <laughs> At this point yeah. in my life, I don't want to be carrying around 55-gallon tanks anymore. Right, right, and having to deal with larger aquariums to have yeah. to get down into and mess with. Yeah. I understand. Well, and one thing that I like about the bowls is that for people getting started, if you're a beginner, rather than starting out with a 55-gallon, mm -hmm. Um, which can go wrong, sorry to say, and you have fish diseases, you have all kinds of problems mm -hmm. um, when you get into the larger tanks. But a shrimp bowl is just, it's so easy. And the plants, um, there's, you haven't invested a lot. It's inexpensive compared to a larger aquarium. Oh yeah, this is nothing, a $10 a bowl and a some potting soil and some sand and main thing is getting good plants. Yeah. <clears throat> so the, the be, this is the beginner version of the Wallstead method. Yes. This is what people should be doing first if they want to do the Wallstead method. I would agree with that. Step right. one. Awesome. Well, um, we've done a lot of talking. Let's start putting these bowls together. Okay, that Yay. sounds good. So what do you want to do first? You start, I'll follow you. Okay, all right. So we've soaked the potting, I've soaked the potting soil overnight. And I did too, because you told me. So I did it before you got here. I did it last yeah. night. I was a good student. Excellent student. <laughs> Two cups of potting soil and about three cups, three-fourths cup of water is what I used. I soaked this overnight like you told me to, but I think we should probably touch base on why you had me do that. Why not just have it put in there the way it was right out of the bag? Why did I have to soak it? Because otherwise the soil will float when you're planting and then it's all popping up and soil 
especially potting soil, contains little wood pieces and debris that have air pockets in them. Mm -hmm. And you want to fill those air pockets with water. Those air pockets are what makes the soil float. A lot of people have trouble with the potting soil floating when they're planting, and they they get it right out of the they take it right out of the bag and then start planting in it, and it doesn't work very well. Yeah, I did that, <laughs> and it didn't yeah. work very well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what did I do wrong? <laughs> and then and then another thing is that um, when I was preparing the potting soil before putting it in here. Um, I took out the larger wood pieces, but I left some in. You don't have to take them all out. I've seen people that have tried to sift the potting soil so that they get this homogeneous little tiny particles of soil, and that's not necessary. The decomposition by bacteria will um, go faster if all the little food particles that they eat are tiny and ready to eat. But if you have some wood pieces that are a little bit larger, then it'll take a little bit longer. Okay. So the decomposition is slowed if you have a mixture of large particles and small particles. So my point is that you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get out every little big piece. Okay. So I didn't get any out. Well, that's fine. It doesn't, I don't see any. You see, I'll probably, I've got, here's, see, I found a little piece there. Okay. But, um, oh, I got I'll throw piece. it back in. I have a piece, too. Okay. But <laughs> what I'm saying is uh, you don't have to have this. Some people are putting it through filtering screens and, yeah. you know, being really careful and, so that it's all the same particle size. You don't have to do that. Okay. That's good. You don't do it with your house plants. You don't have to do it with these plants. Oh, that's that's a really good uh, analogy. Okay. Oh, well. <laughs> Very good. And then um, here, the sand, I rinsed this twice you, before. You don't have to rinse it until it's perfectly clean. Right. Because those little turbid, the clay particles that cause that turbidity, they're nutritious for the plants and they'll also they will settle out mm -hmm. the next day okay so people a lot of people talk about the cation exchange capacity in the soil mm -hmm. sand doesn't have any but clay has all of the cec and and also the potting soil does too so you, you, the clay is good so you, the important part is don't rinse it till it's clear. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You and want that stuff. Those little clay particles are really nice. The plants love them. Awesome. And this is what it's about. It's about the plants. Exactly. It's what they want. All right. <laughs> okay. Here I've got some Bacopa muni. Well, let's put in the rooted plants. They're kind of the hardest. These, this is um, Sagittaria subulata, which I really like. It, oh, it's so pretty. Yeah, it's, it's a great little grower. So I just, um, just stick it in. Okay. I'm going to use my helanthium. Oh, you do that. I'm using these. I'm not trying to you be need. fancy. It's just I've gotten so used to doing it. That's okay. I wanted people to see me digging in there with my fingers. Yes, because you don't have to have fancy tools to do this. Exactly. This is a low-tech business here. So that's the sub Sagittaria subulata. Let's see, I'll put some more in. As far as, like, the roots go, do you ever cut them? Yeah, they, yes, that's, um, but that's enough. That's okay. What That root growth looks fine. Because I... I've had to do that in the past. And yeah, when they get to be that long, then yeah, I would cut them. Okay, so I'm putting in a little bit of water in there. Make it, mine wasn't soupy enough like yours. I think it's easier to plant when it's a little soupy. Yeah, I had to actually take some of the water. <laughs> I yeah. had a spoon and I was pressing down so that it yeah. would. One thing, you have to love dirt in order to do this. <laughs> You, you know, <laughs> that's why I don't get my nails done. Because <laughs> my hands are always in the dirt. 
Oh, well, that's something. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right, so here we go, my little spoon. And I'm going to start putting in the sand. This is not an easy thing to do. And the sand is much heavier than the potting soil, so it holds it down. So it won't float. <laughs> So there's just no way to do this in a graceful manner. It's just impossible. And this plant, the pearl grass, uh, it grows so well that it doesn't really, I, I felt I don't really have to plant it that much. I'll just wait till the end on that one. And how much sand did you say you put in? Um, I'm putting in one, one cup. One cup. Yeah. And you used how much soil again? Two cups. Two cups, okay. Yeah. So the total volume of soil and sand is three cups in my bowls. This is so much fun. <laughs> okay. It does not take much to amuse her, Diana. <laughs> she is very easy to please. Oh, wow. I just love creating little ecosystems though it's so much fun to see oh, what you can create oh yours looks really nice well we'll see what it looks oh, like oh man water, though. <laughs> okay <laughs> see it's starting to you have to kind of plant and then here I see some soil popping up so put some sand in there where it's popping up oh no. and that way you don't have a mess here I want to use as much space for the plants if you want plants to purify the water and produce oxygen it doesn't help to have half of the bowl filled up with driftwood which will produce a, a lot of dissolved organic carbon that will cause bacteria growth and that bacteria will not only make the water cloudy, but it will um, consume oxygen. Oh, see, that's good to know. I don't think a lot of people know that. Yeah, I, I was the new people, the new fish keepers, people that don't know a lot about plants would probably not know that. I would say when you're first starting out, try to keep it simple. Use a lot of plants. Um, don't go with, don't use driftwood. It's just, it can cause a, it can be, in, cause a lot of big problems. But if you have a, you know, later on, when you have a big tank, there's more room for the driftwood, and then you've got a filter going that will aerate the water. Mm -hmm. So the driftwood is less of a problem than in a little bowl like this. Okay. Yeah, anytime there's a little bit of, Soil or roots not quite right. You can just add a little bit more sand with this spoon. That is so neat. It's really working too. Okay. Because <laughs> I'll see where it pops on it when I just add yeah. sand around it. Yeah. It was funny, but when I was working in the lab, one of the PhDs, he said, I can't work with the soil, it just makes the biggest mess. And I found out that when he was adding the water, that he was just dumping it in. Typical man. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, you have to do it gently. Want me to put my hand in there? Um, or, oh. oh, that'd be easier for you. Oh, thank you. Bowl's looking good. Thank you. You am trying. I was checking to see if I missed some pockets or something. Like, I think just the soil has been getting on the plants and sticking. What you can do the next day is to tap the plant leaves mm -hmm. and the kind of dust, that'll dust them off a little bit from the, the clay particles that settle on them. Oh, yes. But this looks real nice. Thank you. Well, we're done. 
and this was so much yeah. fun. I had a blast doing this. I know mine took a lot longer because it's a bigger it's bowl. A bit, it's a bigger bowl. <laughs> and thank you for your help because it was, I, I couldn't have done it without you. I could have done it, but the wrong way again. Um, but I just want to say thank you for coming. And is there anything else that you want to add to this? All right. Well, I'm, today I've enjoyed very much our demonstration, and I thank you for having me and hosting me, because I never would have done it otherwise. <laughs> and uh, the bowls are a demonstration of something that looks easy, but you're dealing with uh, many complex subjects like submerged soil chemistry, which is totally different from agriculture you know, a terrestrial soil or a house plant, growing a house plant, once the soil is submerged, it changes everything. And um, the other thing I think is that a lot of people don't understand how much plants like ammonia, so that means it reduces the filtration. But there are, there are so many aspects that I just can't go into them, and they are in my book. Um, which I'm very proud of. Yes, and, and I am very excited to read it again myself. The fourth edition, that is. I have not read the fourth edition. This will be the first time, but your other books I have read. Okay. So I'm excited. This is going to be a lot of fun, and I, I know I'm going to learn some new stuff that you maybe didn't go over during the uh, demo, but I'm excited. And I, okay. I hope that other people are excited when they get to read it as well. Well, thank you very much. And it's been my pleasure to be here. Oh, I can't wait to go eat dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so everybody, thank you so much for watching. This has been such an amazing experience. And thank you, Diana. And everybody else, thank you too, because this is an awesome, awesome experience, like I said. I, I don't even know what else to say about it, but we will talk to you next time, and you all have a wonderful day. <laughs> <laughs>